welcome back to Sunday Dinner. Tonight, we have something really exciting to share with everyone here. It's our ultimate chicken curry. Um, this recipe has truly been an adventure for us as a family. Um, it started many, many months ago when we ran across a recipe of a Somalian yogurt curry. And it really piqued our interest. We love curry, we love Indian curry, we love Thai curry. And this was something really different, a Somalian curry. And the basis of this recipe has a lot of similarities to that original recipe. But what we found is there are certain things that we like from our Indian recipes and certain things that we like from our Thai recipes that just made this right to combine with the Somalian curry. We took it one step further. We live in Texas. We like to grill. We started adding one thing really different to this recipe is grilling techniques and cooking it over mesquite charcoal. And that really brought this whole thing together that made it the ultimate chicken curry for us. And we're really excited to share that with you. Um, what you're going to see here, we're going to start by making a tandoori chicken. We featured this tandoori chicken in our butter chicken recipe. Um, we're going to show you kind of, um, you can go to that link and we can show you how to make that. And we'll list those ingredients down below. But we started with a full tandoori chicken, which we're going to mesquite grill over mesquite charcoals, which really sets this entire dish off. And then here we have some incredible vegetables that really make this entire dish. We start with a couple Yukon Gold potatoes, a couple bell peppers, and today we've chosen red bell pepper and, a, and an orange bell pepper you could use. Whatever ones you really want, these are what we prefer. Um, we have a fresh pineapple, which we're gonna cube up and put in here. We have one shallot. We have two yellow onions. We have two or three jalapenos, and, and again, you can adjust the, the heat of this dish depending on how many jalapenos you would like to use. We have three carrots. We have a head of garlic, which we'll probably use about four, four or five cloves up, maybe even a little bit more. We have around six to eight tomatoes, depending on how big of tomatoes. We like um, using Roma tomatoes in this dish. You can really use whatever you want. We have a head of cilantro. Um, we have ginger to go with that garlic. And then here you have the last uh, vegetable we have is the banana. And that's really gonna be an accoutrement with the uh, we're not going to cook that in the curry, but that's going to be something we eat with the curry. Um, beyond that, with our spices, we have turmeric powder, we have garam masala, we have cumin, we have cardamom, and then of course we have some yogurt, um, ghee, and some olive oil in which we'll use to kind of saute all our vegetables and bring this together. Well, this is quite a bit. This dish really is not overly complicated. It comes together pretty quickly and makes some of the most amazing flavors when all combined together. I really implore you, uh, when you see this, don't feel intimidated. This is easy. Follow these recipes, and I promise you, you're going to have a dish that's going to amaze your family or your friends or whoever you choose to serve this for. So, um, like I said, the first thing we're going to do here is mesquite grill our tandoori chicken. And... Um, once we kind of get that done, we're going to bring you back in the kitchen and we're going to walk you through all the steps of making this, our amazing curry, our, what we're going to call is our ultimate chicken curry here at Sunday dinner. And um, look forward to joining you back here shortly. All right, as you can see, our tandoori chicken or our charcoal is looking magnificent. We are absolutely looking for some of that char. That's what's going to really set this entire dish off. They've been going around 10 minutes now, 12 minutes. I'm only going to cook them for about 15 to 18 minutes. So not completely cooked. This is going to actually cook in the curry um, for about 20 minutes at the end of this dish. So we're going to flip these one more time. Let me see some. Right. It's been about three more minutes and these chicken thighs look amazing. We are absolutely looking for that char. That is exactly what's going to set this dish off. So I'm going to go ahead and pull these now. Um, we're going to let these rest for about five or 10 minutes at least till they cool down and start deboning and then we'll uh, add these to the dish later on. But just want to kind of show you all this cooking process and what we're looking for in our mesquite grilled tandoori chicken. All right, so the tandoori chicken looks truly amazing. I wish I had smell-o-vision, guys. This smells unbelievable. As you can see here, the, the, the skin is nice and crisp, has a really nice char to it, and as I said, it's gonna add a ton of flavor and layers of flavor to this entire dish. Okay, so the next step in this process is to make our, our base sauce. And um, this is really, really simple. Um, I have our blender over here. I have our eight Roma tomatoes. You can see about what that is. So we go ahead and just put these in our blender. Yep. Got one going to arrive here. Just put this right into our blender. We have our, we actually use three 
jalapenos, we're gonna add into here, and one red pepper. And we're literally just gonna blend this um, for about 30 seconds to a minute. So we get a nice little sauce. And as you can see, see those tomatoes at the bottom, there's plenty of juice. That's gonna liquefy really easily. I don't want to get this to where it's overdone. I'm just going to nice, bump it up just a little bit more to a blend. See all the peppers breaking down now into that sauce. Slow it down and turn it off. Okay, that's it. We're going to set this aside as we're going to use this later after we saute our vegetables. So the next step here is again, we're going to let this set and rest, um, but then we're going to go ahead and saute our vegetables next, which we're going to start with our carrots. We're going to go through that process here in just a minute. All right, so now we have all our vegetables here, which will be our first step, sauteing our vegetables. I've got my pan already starting um, here. I'm going to start with about a tablespoon here of ghee. So just slide that in there. And then I'm going to put about, probably about a tablespoon, equal parts of light tasting olive oil. Okay, I have these vegetables in a very specific order, as you can see here. And this is just on our preference. You're you can welcome to do this a little bit out of your order, depending if you like your vegetables a little more crunchy, a little more saute, but this is the order we prefer. So we're actually gonna start with our carrots. And as you want to zoom in here a little bit, we have these kind of um, cut in halves and rings and halves. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with these is these are gonna take a little bit longer um, to cook in our um, dish. So we're gonna start with that. From there, we're gonna go our potatoes and peppers. Then we're gonna add our onions. Followed by our onions, we're gonna do our pineapple, shallot, garlic and ginger, tomato paste, and seasonings. That's the order we're gonna go in. So right now, you see our oil is starting to dance in our pot here a little bit. It's exactly what I'm looking for. It's quite a bit, you got quite a bit of vegetables. As you see, that oil is starting to shimmer here. So we'll go ahead and dump in our carrots and get those sauteing. Okay, we're gonna probably let these go for about, I'm gonna say about three to four minutes, maybe two to three, three to four, before I add my next round of vegetables. All right, the carrots have now been cooking right at three minutes, been watching the time, and now we're gonna go ahead and add in our orange bell pepper, which kind of goes with the color of those carrots and the overall color of the dish. And then we got our two Yukon Gold potatoes, we actually added one more, so this is actually three Yukon Gold um, carrots. I'm just gonna kind of stir that in. I'm gonna grab me a little sea salt here. Okay, I'm gonna add me a little bit of sea salt to help bring all the starches and all the flavors out of these. And I'm gonna let this now saute for another probably, let's call it three to five minutes until I start seeing the bell pepper soften. At that point in time, I'm gonna go ahead and then add our onions. Okay, so the potatoes and bell peppers have been cooking about four to five minutes. We're gonna go ahead and add our onions now. And get these nice and mixed up. Um, at any time, if this looks a little too dry, you can add a little more olive oil, add a little more ghee if you need to. This actually looks perfect. Um, again, I'm gonna add a little bit of salt. One more time, now that I put the onions in, to help release the flavors out of the onions, to help these sweat down. We're gonna go ahead and cook this for about another four to five minutes until I see these onions just starting to turn translucent. Because we still have to add our shallots, still have to add our garlic, um, ginger, as well as pineapple. So I'm not gonna cook them completely, but we're gonna, before we're finished, we're gonna have these onions all the way caramelized before we move on to the next step, so. All right, so. The onions are nice and translucent. We went ahead and added our pineapple, our minced garlic, our minced ginger, as well as our shallot, and this is now cooking nicely. I'm gonna let this go ahead and combine. This is looking amazing. The starches from the potatoes are coming down. The onions are becoming translucent. I'm gonna cook this for about another three to five minutes before I then re-add my spices and our tomato paste to this, the last step before we add our reserve sauce. All right, so our pineapples and shallots and ginger and garlic have now been cooking for about another three minutes. The fragrant, the fragrant smells are unbelievable. Now it's really gonna kick it up for a hundred level. So if you kind of zoom in here, what we have here is one tablespoon of garam masala. 
Um, we use Loxme brand. Um, we've tried a lot of different ones. This is one of our favorites. You can use any kind of curry powder you want, but we actually like the Garam Masala. This is because that Indian kind of flair versus some of the other curry powders you may be able to use. So I'm just gonna sprinkle this all over the dish. We're gonna kind of just toast all of these seasonings. Next thing we know or have here is one tablespoon of cumin. Same thing, we're gonna sprinkle it all over. We have one teaspoon of turmeric powder. It's gonna help give it that vibrant orange color. And then we have one quarter of a teaspoon of cardamom. Again, some of those incredible Indian seasonings. All right. We're gonna get this nice and mixed up. We're gonna kind of plume these spices. I know it's gonna kind of look messy and kind of nasty, but I promise it's gonna help kind of bring out the flavors of all of these seasonings. All right, we're gonna kind of keep doing this for about one more minute and let these seasonings cook in. After that, we're then gonna kind of add our tomato paste here and get this all rolling together. Okay, our seasonings have now been pluming for about one full minute. Um, we're going to add this tomato paste now to our dish. Um, kind of, you know, in our traditional Italian cooking, what we've learned, it's really important to kind of brown in that tomato paste. I know this is going to kind of look gunky. It's going to kind of look a little bit messy, but I promise you this is those flavors just kind of melting together. And I want to kind of cook that tomato seasoning, some of the acidity out of that tomato paste. Okay. So as you can see, like I said, it's going to look a little gunky. We're going to let this cook and kind of keep browning for about two to three minutes. And um, after that, that's when we're gonna add our sauce and kind of keep this recipe moving. Okay, our tomato paste has been cooking down now for right about two to three minutes. And now it's time we're gonna add that reserve sauce, which is that tomato, pepper, red bell pepper, and three jalapenos. I'm just gonna add it right to the sauce. You can absolutely do serrano peppers in here. And if you don't like spicy dishes, you know, really all you would need to do here to take the spice out of this dish or the, the heat out of this dish is to omit the jalapenos or serranos. All right, the last thing I'm gonna do here is I've had one cup of plain yogurt. I've had this sitting out on the counter now, getting it more to a room temperature. And as this now is just now coming up to temperature, this should not help, it should not curdle um, our yogurt. All right, this is gonna make a really unique color here. As you can see, as this yogurt and tomato and vex vegetable mixture all mixes together with all of those seasonings, it's gonna turn into one amazing curry. Okay, all right, right now I still have this fire on about medium high. I'm gonna let this um, mixture now come up to a nice simmer. Once I see it come to a nice simmer and boil, I'm gonna turn it down to medium low or even low and put a top on this just vented and we're gonna cook it for 20 minutes. So as you can see here, as we're already talking, as this fire is really hot, it's starting to come to a nice little boil. That's perfect, that's exactly what we're looking for. I'm gonna let it cook for probably one or two minutes like this, and then I'm gonna go ahead and cut that temperature down. All right, join you soon. All right, so this has come up to a really nice simmer. I wanna zoom in here. Um, nice little rolling simmer. I'm gonna stir this around one more time, just like that. I'm gonna vent this just about like that. I'm gonna turn this down, like I said, right about to medium low. From here, I'm gonna go ahead and set a timer for 20 minutes. And I'm gonna stir continuously, call it every about two to three minutes and make sure nothing's sticking on the bottom here and let this cook for 20 more minutes. After which, we are going to add our chicken, our cilantro, our um, coconut milk, and it's really gonna bring this all together. Um, join you back soon. That's a perfect, nice, slow simmer. We're just gonna go ahead and keep stirring it and keep that vented just like that. Okay, it's been 20 minutes now that our sauce has been simmering. As you can see, it's been a nice, steady simmer. That's exactly what we're looking for. And now we're gonna add the last of our ingredients to our pot. The other thing I've done in the interim here is I have started our rice and it's just starting boiling. It's exactly what I wanted to do. So I'm gonna add our four tablespoons of butter here. There we go. Just kind of let that mix in and melt in really quickly. We're then going to do one full can of um, coconut uh, milk. Not coconut cream, coconut milk. I'm using a Thai style coconut milk. It's a, it is unsweetened first press, but I enjoy a Thai coconut milk flavor profile. We then have one cup of chopped coarse cilantro. 
You can use more or less depending on how you like those flavors. And I'm gonna go ahead and get that blended in here before I add my chicken. As you can see, my rice is coming to a perfect nice little boil. I'm gonna go ahead and give that one nice big stir. So it's been boiling right for about a minute. I'm gonna go ahead and turn that down all the way to low. Top on, and that's gonna cook for 15 minutes. Okay, perfect. Now that coconut cream or coconut milk is mixing in with our sauce. The smells here, the butter starting to melt in the sauce. Add that nice sweet and buttery flavor. And then our last ingredient is all of that mesquite grilled tandoori chicken. And this is what really brings all of that, what I'm gonna call fusion flavor together. This is a Texa Mali Indian curry. And our, what we're gonna call is our ultimate chicken curry. All right, we're gonna mix all that in. And as you can see, this is a really large dish. You could half this for a small family. I have a family of four, and uh, my son is 16, has a voracious appetite, and this will feed us at least one full leftover meal as well. So it's something we always strive for on Sundays is prepping for the rest of the week. So this will feed us tonight and then give us an entire another meal for the entire family. Okay, same process here. I'm gonna let this come up to temperature. I'm gonna bring it back up to about medium, medium high. All right, now that the kind of the temperature came down, we added all the chicken, and then we're gonna bring it to a nice small simmer, put the top back on it, keep it tinted, and cook it for another 20 minutes. After that 20 minutes, we'll go ahead and serve this over some rice. And guys and ladies, this smells amazing. Look forward to joining you soon. Okay, so it's been about three minutes. You can see our curry now is it a nice little brisk simmer. We're gonna do one more nice little stir. Now you can see how thick and rich this is. And we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna go ahead and tent this just like that. We're gonna bring this down to about medium low and this is where we're gonna want our 20 minutes to start. 20 minutes left in this dish and it's gonna be truly amazing. Look forward to sharing with you here shortly. Uh, we are gonna go ahead and stir every about three to five minutes to keep it moving, make sure nothing's sticking at the bottom as well. Um, just a tip, we want to ignore this, but kind of keep that tinted as well. We don't want this completely closed off, and um, mm, the smells coming out of the spot are incredible. Okay, our curry's now been cooking for an entire 20 more minutes. And as you can see here, it is steaming hot. The layers of flavor are look truly incredible. Now I'm going to go ahead and serve this into a bowl. We're going to serve this over some jasmine rice. I want to make sure I get good even portion here of some chicken, the cilantro, the pineapple, the carrots, the tomatoes, a little bit of everything. Make sure you get plenty of chicken in that dish. And um, I'll tell you what, you look at this, the smell, the flavor combinations are truly magnificent. Guys, don't be afraid to try new things. I know this curry sounds pretty um, out there, maybe a little bit different. Our Texa Malian Indian curry, our ultimate chicken curry at Sunday dinner. This is gonna be an incredible pleasure to serve my family tonight. The flavors, the smells are truly magnificent. One thing, don't forget, you're gonna eat this with a banana. I don't even like bananas, but the flavor from the heat, the spice, everything, that the pineapple, um, the savoriness of this dish is amazing offset with the sweetness of a of a banana is truly magnificent don't skip it you may be um you may be willing to do so but don't i promise you you're gonna love that don't forget that as well as this last 20 minutes one of the last things i want to make sure you remember is as you do this check your potatoes if your potatoes need a little longer keep going it can go 20 30 minutes even no problem at all you just want to make sure your potatoes are completely done your chicken's going to be really moist this has been braising in this amazing curry for that last 20 minutes. So with that, that's it. Um, look forward to everyone going out and trying this dish. We had a lot of fun sharing this. I can't tell you the amount of times we made this, um, really honing this in. Try the tandoori chicken over mesquite. Try it with all these amazing flavors. We look forward to seeing you again soon. Thanks for visiting Sunday Dinner. Don't forget to like our Facebook page, go subscribe to our YouTube channel, Sunday Dinner, and follow our amazing recipes. Everyone have a wonderful night.